हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस एपिसोड ऑफ माय एसक्यूएल इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ टू कनेक्ट माय एसक्यूएल विथ पाइथन प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज एंड हाउ टू वर्क विथ माय एसक्यूएल प्रोग्रामेटिकली इट मींस दैट वी आर गोइंग टू राइट पाइथन प्रोग्राम्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ द डेटाबेस ऑपरेशन एंड फॉर दैट वी नीड टू इंस्टॉल अ फ्यू लाइब्रेरीज सो लेटस सी वॉट लाइब्रेरीज आर to be installed the first library is pip install py my sql py my sql so this library is going to help us to connect python programming language to my sql engine now we also need to install another library known as cryptography this library is required for logging in to the mysql database using pymysql so you can run all these commands on the command prompt and finally we are supposed to install the pandas library which is a very popular data science library for python programming language <coughs> so we have installed all the required libraries now let us get started with the programming so this is the mysql workbench from where we can verify if our programmatic stuff is working properly so let us see the list of all the databases and here we have list of all the databases so a few databases we have installed manually like employees and sakila so this fk demo is created by me for the earlier video lecture on foreign key and referential integrity and rest are all the information schemas or these are data, data dictionary schemas so now we have sakila database and we are going to continue using that in our python programs so now we have seen everything we have installed all the libraries and we have seen what databases are there and we have also decided to use the sakila database now let me open the ide so it is going to open the python in the interactive mode the ideally integrated development and learning environment so this is the ideally shell as we are aware of it and let us create a new file By the way all these programs are available for download I have already uploaded them in my GitHub repository and link to this GitHub repository is available in the description section down below from where you can visit that URL and you can download the source codes from the GitHub So I'm going just going to save the name I'm going to copy it in the buffer clipboard and let us save this file in that path Save as and let us paste the path here so that it is going to take us to that directory location and here i am going to say 00 and connection okay so the first program is going to be very very simple we are just going to see how to connect programmatically so i am going to say import py my sql now let us create a handle db equals to it is an object it is a handle for getting hold on our database py my sql dot connect now let us say host equals to local host we are going to connect to the instance running on the local host then user equals to test user and i'm not sure test user is there now so i will just say root let us connect as root but this is not the safest way because this way you can programmatically do a lot of damage so in case you are not comfortable with root then create your own user in the database and mention that username and password here so password equals to test123 and database equals to sakila 
So this is going to help us connect to that particular database. And let us now create a cursor. If you have ever worked with any sort of database application, then you know the meaning of cursor. So we have the screen cursor. So this is the screen cursor, right? The thing that is blinking here on the screen. So this allows us to traverse through this entire file. Similarly, the database cursor helps us to traverse through an entire table row by row. So cursor is usually an object in the database programming. We have to explicitly create a cursor and there are many ways we can work with the implicit cursors. So in case you have worked with PL SQL, then you will remember all these concepts. In case you are not aware, just know that cursor is nothing but a database object. That is, it's not a database object. Basically, it is a uh, object in your programming languages that interface with the database. Basically, cursor is a facility. It is an object that traverses an entire table line by line. That's it. Okay. So it is a very simple concept and we will know actually how to work with that very soon. So select version is the query. So let me run this query manually first on our database to make sure that it is correct. Otherwise we are going to mess up. So it is going to return us the version 8.0.27. I have recently updated the version of the database in order to record an earlier video about update of the SQL, MySQL server. Now we can execute the query with the cursor, cursor dot execute. And I will just say SQL. And we can catch the data, data equals to cursor dot fetch one. So we can execute this query SQL, this string contains the query. Okay. So we can execute the string containing the query and then cursor is going to access the result set one by one. So whenever I'm going to say fetch one, it is going to fetch one record and move to the next record. So here there is only one row in the output. So if I execute this cursor fetch one twice, then it is not going to be meaningful. That is why I'm executing it only once and we are going to fetch the version ID and then we are going to print it on the screen. We are storing it in a Python variable data. And now let us print it. Print database version percent s percent data and db dot close. So here we are closing the database handle. So I will save this. It has been saved to my local copy of the GitHub repository and it is available for download. Just check the description section of this video. So let us go ahead and run this run module. So here we have the output database version is 8.0.27. So here you can even mention an instance of MariaDB. So it is not only good for MySQL, you can even use the same code to connect with the MariaDB. Here just you have to change the parameters of the target machine. So this is how we can fetch the version from the database. Now we have a couple of more examples and we are going to use the same template over and over again. Now the next example is create table query. So let us see create table query, how to execute that type of query with this sort of arrangement. So I will just save this as 01 create table. So let us delete all the part that is not going to be used for now. Okay. So we are just going to reuse this much of part. So now let us write our query. I will write it in the try block. In case you are not comfortable with the try and accept, then you should be seriously studying exceptions in Python. So you can find 
that episode in my YouTube channel. Just check out my YouTube channel for more videos on Python programming. Okay. So SQL equals to, I will say create table test underscore table. So this is a create table query and I will say first name car 20 not null last name car 20 not null age is an integer gender is a character of length one and income is float. So this is the string that has the SQL query. And now I'm going to say db dot. Okay. So I will just create the cursor right after I have created the object. Okay. For our database. This way we can keep the code organized. Finally, cursor dot execute SQL print the table created successfully and EXEPT print So in case the execute query failed, we can say that the table already exists, already exists in the database. That's it. So it is a very simple program. And in the end, we are just using db.close. So this is the program for creating a table programmatically with Python in my SQL. So let's execute this. Okay. So it says that the table created successfully. We can just check this show or I will say use Sakila. Now show tables. Here we should find test something. Okay. So it is test P Q R S T. Yes. Test table. It is the last table. And I can just say D E S C test table test table. So here we have first name, last name, age, gender, and income just the way we have defined them. So this is how we can create tables or execute data definition language queries programmatically using Python. Now I'm going to insert data into table and that is very, very easy. We can say file save as insert dot pi. So here zero to insert dot pi or I will just say zero to underscore insert. Ideally we'll automatically assign it the required extension. Okay. So the file has been renamed or we have created a copy of the file. It's not exactly renaming. I will just remove this part. Okay. So let us create four strings. Now pay attention. It is very important that you understand how the insert queries are created as strings into test table. First name last name 
last name age gender and income so i'm not actually pronouncing this word because it is actually a taboo topic in india so that is why i am using the alternative word gender values and i will say ashwin that is my name a s h w i n p a j a n k a r 35 that is my age male that is my gender and 1000 okay i guess i made a small syntax error so let me rectify it so even if you or i make any syntax error there is no need to get worried because we can always rectify all the errors that we have committed in programming as well as in life life gives us a lot of chances so never feel down if you feel down let me know i will do my best to lift your spirit thor its surname is odinson probably does he have a surname i don't know his salary is less guards do not require a lot of salary tony stark his age is 45 let's say he is also a male and his salary is 40000 finally we have jane her family name is foster her age is 32 she is a female natalie portman i guess and 3000 okay so now we can use a for loop or i can say sqls sqls equals to sql1 comma so i'm going to create a list sql2 and we are going to iterate over this list sql3 and sql4 fine and i will say for query in sqls cursor dot execute q u e r y that's it and finally we are just going to say db dot commit db dot commit after every iteration we can commit it or we can actually have this in the try block and whenever we are going to find any exception in this it is going to say the records were not inserted okay the records are inserted i n s e r t e d inserted okay were not inserted that's it so this is a very simple piece of code we are defining four strings sql1 2 3 4 we are collecting them in a list and then we are iterating over that list and every time we are fetching one member of that list and executing that particular string so this is the list of strings and we are accessing every string one by one and we are executing it and we are committing after every execution of that sql so this is the data modification query dml query insert so let's go ahead and execute it let's cross the fingers and execute it there shouldn't be any syntax error cool the records are inserted successfully so i can just say select star from test table select star from test table ashwin thor tony and jen so these four records were inserted successfully 
So this is how we can work with the insert statement programmatically with Python. Now let us go to the next program. So this was, I guess, our third program. We have four to five more programs, but there is no need to worry because we are going to use the same template. Okay, now we are programmatically going to fetch the data from the table. We have already seen select star from test table. So let's save it as 03 select. And let me save this. So let's delete this entire stuff and let me define a new SQL, SQL equals to select star from test table and we can try to execute this query like this. Okay, so one two, three and four spaces. Okay, so the records are fetched. We're not fetched successfully. Okay. And here we have the query select star from test table. And here we are executing it. Now after executing that query, we can we have already seen the usage of fetch one. Now we are going to see the usage of fetch all. So result set equals to cursor dot fetch all for row in result set f name is the first name equals to row of zero. L name equals to row of one, age equals to row of two, gender equals to row of three, and finally income equals to row of four. That's it. So I will say print percent s percent s comma percent d that is for age then percent s is for gender and again percent d for income okay and I will say percent so let's close this like this okay and let's write it in the next line. Otherwise it is going to become a very big line. I don't want that to happen. Comma, L name, comma, gender, comma, sorry, age, comma, gender, and income. That's it. So this was the very simple program. So here we are executing the query. So sorry, it should be SQL because yeah, the name of the variable containing that string here is SQL. So we are executing the string known as SQL that has the original query, select star from test underscore table. Then we are fetching all the rows into a variable. And then we are iterating over that variable and fetching everything one by one, all the columns one by one. So let me save it. Let me cross the fingers and execute the code. There shouldn't be any syntax error. Cool. So there was not a single syntax error. So I'm always afraid of syntax error. I don't know why. Probably it is the very high expectation of perfection. I don't know. Now we are going to update the record and let us see how we can do that. File, save as. Oops, oops, sorry, I shouldn't use save as on ideally. 
So here if I use save as it is going to take me to the same folder where we have saved everything earlier. Okay, I guess select, yeah, we just ran the select query. Now we are going to use another DML query update. And that is also again very, very easy. The records are here. I'm going to change the string updated and updated. DB dot commit. And here we are going to change the SQL and it is going to be a bit complex. So just bear with me, update test underscore table set income equals to income plus 500. That's it. So we are going to giving, we are going to give everyone a salary raise of 500 rupees or dollars, whatever you think. Okay. That's it. Update test table set income income equals to income plus 500. And this is the very simple update statement. And I don't think that there should be any problem. So here we just need to mention db dot rollback db dot rollback. In case it is not successful, then we can just roll back to the earlier state. That's it. Okay. So let me go ahead and execute this. Cool. Now we can just see the records here. So here everything is 10,000, 2,000, 40,000 and 3,000. So if I run this query, 500 should be added. Cool. 10,500, 2,500, 40,500 and 3,500. So this is awesome. This is how we can update everything programmatically. Now let me count how many pages are there. So only three programs are remaining. And the next program is we can delete something. Okay. Delete from some table that is also easy. We just need to make small changes. Only two or three lines have to be changed. Save as. Okay. And I will say five. Okay. So earlier I gave a wrong number. So I will just say delete. Okay. It should be five, right? Five delete. I will also open something and so here in place of 03 update, I will just make it 04 update. So sorry for small mistake. Okay. And so this is the copy of that earlier program. And here I'm just going to say delete from test table. That's it. Delete from test table. So cursor dot execute SQL db dot commit records are deleted successfully are not deleted successfully. That's it. Very simple program, very simple query. Let's run the module. And it says the records are deleted successfully. So again, if I execute this, it will show me no records. Great. And finally, we will again run another data definition library, uh, data definition query, DDL query, data definition language query. I said library by mistake. Sorry for that again. And let's go to this file, save it as 06 drop table. Okay. We are going to drop the entire table. DROP. Drop table, test table. Okay. Drop table, test table. And we know that data definition language queries are auto commit. So we don't have to do commit or rollback. So we can delete those lines. And this is a very simple program. Save. Okay. I think that we have to save it as 06 drop. Okay. 06 drop. 
and we will delete that earlier file zero five drop got it right so we have seven different programs so let's go ahead and the table dropped the table is dropped successfully the table was not dropped successfully that's it or i can say the object does not exist the object does not exist so i'm going to run this program twice so first time it is going to show this output and the second time it is going to show this output so be careful and pay attention so it says the table is dropped successfully let me run this again and let us see how it changes the output the object does not exist because it is going into this exception block because it is not able to execute this query this is actually returning some sort of error since we have already dropped the table from our database so this is how we can programmatically connect to mysql with python programming language now the last thing that is left is how to work with pandas okay so let me go ahead and close this let us close this also and okay so we are in the sakila database right or let's say control z okay so you want to check the output of the last thing right so it should actually return the error error code table sakila dot test table doesn't exist okay so this is for your confirmation i am executing everything okay and if i say test show tables it is not going to show us the test table because it has already been removed from our database now the next thing that we need to know is how to fetch the data and store it in the pandas data frame and that is quite easy that is only like a couple of lines of program let us do that so here we have the last program of ours so i'm going to open it in from a text editor so let's increase the size so i have just opened it in the word pad because we just need to copy some part for our stuff okay so what i'm going to do i am going to copy this entire path directory path it is actually the local mirror of my github repository where i have uploaded the code you can check the link in the description from there you can download all the code files okay so i have copied this location and i am going to traverse to that location from the command prompt so i am comfortable with the powershell because it actually offers a lot of linux like or unix like commands but you can also open this thing from the cmd the command prompt of windows now i am going to open a jupyter notebook if you remember we had installed the pandas library in the beginning and now we are going to see how to fetch all the data from a single table into a pandas object so let it open that thing so the file name should be 07 pandas so let us go ahead and create a new python file so we have 06 drop dot py and the next file is going to be 07 pandas okay or let's say pandas and my sql rename okay so i have already told you that we have to install pandas library okay install pandas so we have already installed pandas but anyway we are going to execute this query and meanwhile while the query executes it is just going to say requirement already satisfied so i will just say 
import or we have already copied that stuff in buffer okay so we are going to require first two lines of this code import pymysql and then we are going to create a handle okay in fact you can even um, say try and let me show you how to write the code in proper Pythonic way. And I will say print db connection is established. Fine, right? ESTA BLISHD and accept e x e e p t db connection could not be established right could not be established so e double r o r so that's how i prefer to write the code and yes db connection is established i will say now import pandas as pd so this is the usual convention of importing the pandas library we are importing it with alias pd now let us go to the mysql workbench and run a simple query show tables right we are already in the database sakila and here we are checking the list of tables and here we have the table country so describe country c o u n t r y so I guess it is the list of countries and some country code. Yeah. Country ID, country and last update date. Okay. And here I'm going to say country. So here we have the data related to all the countries. So probably all the countries the actors belong to. And we are going to execute this query programmatically and fetch the data into data frame that is quite easy df1 equals to pd dot read underscore sql this is the library function from pandas and here i'm just going to say select star from country that's it there is nothing more to it it is not going to be unnecessarily complex python makes everything very very easy so it's, it is taking some time because it is fetching from the database okay it says connection is missing Okay, so I just need to say db, sorry for the mistake. And let's execute it. And it fetched. Wow. It just took it one second probably. And let us now see the data in data frame one. So this is country ID, country and last update. So there are 109 rows and three columns. That's it. So this is how you can fetch the data stored in a MySQL table into pandas data frame object. And now we are free to manipulate this data frame and we can do a lot of stuff with this data. Okay, we can visualize it and do a lot of stuff. So thanks a lot for watching this. Probably you can write some small visualization routine. That is what I'm thinking of. So I will just say import matplotlib dot by plot as plt and i will say plt dot plot and country id okay c o u n t r y underscore id and plt dot show so this is simple increasing list so i'm not sure how it is going to okay it should be df1 dot country id right yeah so it actually just is showing us as a line, simple linear stuff. Okay. And this way you can actually use matplotlib to visualize the data. There is no significant type of data here. That is why it is just showing a line, right? So basically it is nothing but from one to 109, right? So it is just actually showing us all those points connected by a linear thing. So this is how we can work with pandas, MySQL and Python.
So I hope that you have understood everything that I have explained. In case you are looking for code, just check out the link in the description section where I have mentioned the URL to my GitHub repository. I'm just going to refresh the code. After I'm just going to push the code to the origin, commit it. After finishing the recording, do let me know if you have any question or query in the comment section down below. Please do not forget to like, share and comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot and I will see you in the next episode.